This is the first of three presentations showing you a little bit about the LMS series scanners. In the bottom right hand side you can see the principle of operation. We send a laser beam out to an object, see how long it takes to hit and come back, hence time of flight. When we know that time we can work out the distance and by spinning the beam around it gives us a curtain of light. Here you can see that curtain of light is being used to provide a point cloud image which is used on vehicles for mapping. You might have seen these driving around the streets in the UK on the top of vehicles doing street mapping. That's one application. You can find more details about automatic and autonomous vehicles in this address here. This shows you the sort of scan range that the LMS 511 has. You can see it goes almost out to 90 degrees. 90 meters through 190 degrees. In this area we can put fields and if something goes into that field we can provide a digital output to prevent a collision. Here's a few applications. You can see the Stanford car that was used in the DARPA challenge and a few other scanners mounted on the roofs of cars for street mapping. Quite a common application is to prevent the booms of these gantry cranes from hitting the bridges of ships. You can imagine the amount of damage and the cost of it if it hit one of these. So the scanners can be mounted on the tips. In fact, the next slide will show you in a bit more detail how close these gantries can get to the ship. The solution is here. You mount the LMS on the gantry and as the gantry approaches any sensitive area, we get a warning of to go slow and then a final warning to stop. We have an option of mounting the LMS on the tip of the gantry, looking backwards, giving a zone upstream or downstream, or we can mount them actually on the edge of the gantry, which provides two fields. You can see the one field here is the stop field, and the other field here is the go slow field. Other applications are for security. You can see here we're using the LMS for indoor security to protect paintings. The LMS is insensitive to other objects moving past. However, at night time it can be set to a different mode where the whole facade is protected, detecting any intruders. The device is also IP67, so we can use them outdoors. You can see them here on the top of this building, and that's giving a curtain of light which covers the entire facade of the building, all the way around here. So one sensor with one connection onto the roof, very easy to implement, covers doorways, windows, everything. Additionally, you can put them on the roof, so a sensor can be mounted looking over the whole horizontal area of the roof. In fact, its sensitive area can be extended a little further than the roof, so if a ladder was put up against it, it would soon be detected. Other areas of applications are in the ports and harbours for preventing collisions on the gantry trains on the base of them. You can see here we've got an LMS either side of the foot of the gantry. It enters a slow mode and then a stop mode. This image here is basically the LMS fitted down on the bottom parts of these cranes. Also they're used in traffic applications for vehicle profiling at high speeds on most of the motorways in Switzerland and Germany. You'll notice them if you travel out there. And here you can see typical security applications providing a perimeter protection. This is an image taken from an LMS, 
providing a point cloud or geomapping. One of the advantages with the NMS 500 is we have now a five echo pulse technology, which means we can go through glass, fog, rain, dust, and work on the fifth pulse returned to us from the object that we're looking for. And each of these pulses is selectable. There are two main versions, one standard resolution, one high resolution, the advantage being the size of the light spot and the difference being the range that they can cover. Typically one is used for outdoors and one for indoors where you need it a bit more sensitive. We have different mounting brackets uh, you can see here to allow optical alignment and also a weather shield to keep the rain and snow off the device. Finally, a few more places where you can get information. I'll put these on as links on the YouTube video. The next video is going to deal with how to connect to the LMS using Ethernet, assuming you bought one. And then the video after that will be how to configure it. Thanks very much.